Hello and welcome to the video. First off, this video is titled How To, but with any how to, it's really just how I do it and what's working for me. So if you have a method that works for you, by all means stick with it. But if you're having some struggles or just want to see how someone else is doing it, by all means stick around and check it out. This video is titled How To Paint a Model Car Body with Tester's Extreme Lacquer. And that really stems from a viewer reaching out to me on Facebook and through Messenger. He's just getting back into the hobby and kind of struggling with the painting, especially of the bodies. He was using the Tester's Extreme Lacquers. And uh, we kind of went back and forth, talked it through, and I think uh, he got a grasp on it. I haven't heard back from him, but I also said that I would do a video to kind of show him firsthand what it looked like and how I was doing it. So here it is. Here's the video. Maybe a week or two late. Sorry about that, Dustin, but let's uh, get into it. First up, this car body is primed with Tamiya's Fine Surface Primer, and that is really because I did some body work on this one. This vehicle comes with a separate nose piece that I molded in, smoothed out, and as well as doing the mold lines and everything else. Give it a shot of primer, and it has now been wet sanded with 1000 grit. So that's where we're at with that, as well as the dash. The wheels are completely bare plastic. These ones were chrome that I had stripped, but then the wheel backs. These are yellow. If you were doing something white, you might want to prime those to kind of kill off that color. But since I'm painting with kind of the yellows and browns, it kind of has a yellow tone and I think we'll be just fine there. And a lot of times doing painting, you kind of want to have a smooth, straight surface. I do have some burn throughs like on the hood and whatnot, but I think we'll be just fine. As well as this Tamiya lacquer says it is a paint, primer, and sealer all in one. I think with some proper steps or how I paint, it will be just fine as well. So with that, we are going to be painting this body up with this Tester's Root Beer Brown. We'll do that first, and then we are going to two-tone a gold onto it. So we'll, we'll do both of that in the video so you get a how to spray with the lacquer and kind of see how a two-tone is done. So with that, let's get to the paint booth. Okay, here we are at the booth. I may have to do some audio dubbing once we kick the fans on, but I'll just kind of go over a few more things before we start. Uh, again, this is for the Testers Extreme Lacquers. That's what we're talking about today. This is a brand new can. I have warmed it up under some hot water and then uh, shaken. So this can is ready to go. We should get some nice atomization. And all my parts get blown off with these little canned air cans if you have an air compressor that'll work even better but uh, again back to the fact this is about the lacquer paints good thing about them is that they have really quick dry times and their recoat times are essentially infinite that means they can be recoated in five minutes five hours five days you can put your next coat on as long as the the previous coat has flashed off and dried and that kind of leads into the biggest issue i think there is in painting and that is people uh putting coats on too heavy or possibly too quick in between and everything just getting heavy runs or you get the pull away from the body lines on a lot of models so that brings in get yourself a little timer whether it's on your phone or you got a kitchen timer uh, with the lacquers i will do five minutes on the first coat and then we'll switch over and go to 10 minutes for each of the coats afterwards. Again, with those infinite times, if you want to go 15 minutes or 20 minutes in between coats, go ahead. It's better to miss on the long side than it is on the short side and cause issues that way. So uh, with that said, uh, we will uh, start off with the lesser parts. That is the wheels and tires, or the wheels and the dash and hood. And then we'll switch out and go to the body. So we'll get the body out of the way for now. And we've got the dash there, the hood there. we got our can. And we'll turn on the booth. There's a garbage can over here. I just hit the first kind of blast into the garbage can. Also, you want to just test your cans. Make sure that it's not spitting, sputtering. Make sure you got a good atomization. Keep your distance, and we're just going to do 
real light coats. See, the lighting's not the greatest, but they're real. We're going real light. We're not looking for any coverage. Just getting a dust on there. You see, it's almost more plastic than paint yet. But uh, good enough for coat one. Let's pull the body in. I'll just hit it with the, the air real quick again, just to make sure. I usually start kind of in the lower parts, your kind of a jam method. Get those hidden away parts first. Again, not trying to get any kind of coverage right now just starting to build it up and it will probably don't need a full five minutes here just a couple minutes since we are so light but uh, we'll be back all right we're not quite at a full five minutes but three and a half minutes so pull this out be roughly four minutes once we actually get to spraying here again just real light coats Really trying to get my edges and harder to reach places first. I'm really trying to get that underside of that lip and the hood edges before I do the front surface. Now you can see we're getting starting to get a little color, but still rather transparent. Since we're starting to get a little bit of build up on it, I'll let these kind of flash off for a minute and then we'll throw the body in. got pretty good climate control here I'm pretty dry and a nice room temperature parts are dry ready to go so I can move up move up my times a little bit but again there's no rush to it if you're questioning it and just learning it might as well stay the whole five or ten minutes so let's uh, move on
we've essentially waited the entire 10 minutes, last 30 seconds there. We are essentially at just before full coverage. You know, it's still a little see-through in areas, but uh, we're pretty good there on coverage. So now we can start focusing on getting our gloss up and getting everything flat, but we are looking real nice with that root beer brown. A little bit slower and a little bit heavier to get this other side in those wheels. A little hard to get down in there, but uh, we're getting there. I'll let those flash off so they don't collect any dust and then we'll switch them out. Again, we are at mostly covered. Uh, this will be a little trickier body with all these curves and stuff, but we'll we'll do our ends and then we'll start on the side and work our way up and over. Give it a look over. If there's any kind of drier areas where you see some orange peel, go ahead and hit those because I think we are we are down here. Okay, here we are back up on the bench to essentially do what would be a final for a single color. And no clear coat. If you want to do a clear coat, like the little tester's wet look, I would put that on, you know, in the same uh, kind of pattern. Wait that 10 minutes or so, or maybe even a little longer. Go a half hour and then throw your clear coat on, then let it dry off. It is a lacquer, so they, they work well together. You could do it 10 minutes later or, you know, the next day if you want to go that route. That's up to you on that clear coat. This two-tone, I would probably wait till the next day before I did any masking. Uh, they can be handled within an hour or two, but I would wait the next day just to avoid tape lines and things of that nature. Uh, this is actually a couple days later. I had filmed the first part on Friday evening. I ended up going out of town for the weekend. It is now Monday evening, but uh, let's take a look at this. No, we don't have that ultra clear coat shine on it. But one thing we do have is a nice flat, almost no orange peel finish, a good consistent color, and uh, we can easily bring that shine up with these lacquers with a little hand polish, and that's what we'll do at the end after we get our two-tone on. Uh, the two-tone is going to go up the nose, kind of follow this body line around, and then down. We're going to do gold along the top, and uh, the reason I made that little note of getting distracted while painting is because of just that. I had all my parts in separate piles uh, leading up to it, and then I decided to make this video. Threw all my parts together, and then just kind of forgot to separate them again, because this hood and dash did not need to be painted brown, but no biggie. We'll throw a coat of the gold over top of it, and it'll be just fine. We'll get this body masked up and we'll take a look in just a minute okay here we are we have our two-tone masking at least the outline done all done with Tamiya masking tape some really great tape for scale models super thin low tack uh, won't bleed as long as you don't flood it 
Uh, one thing I would note if this is my first time doing a bubble fender car in a two-tone, uh, any other ones I'd do from now on, I would do the top color and then do the sides second color. But uh, 20 years of doing full-scale automotive painting, I've always done it this way. That way, when I go to take my paper, it'll just hang down on the sides instead of trying to flip it up over the roof and get it masked that way, or I can just drape paper down the sides. I really like these USC handy masks. There's a part number that kind of comes with a pre-tape, and it will unfold the six, seven inches. And it's just a nice way to mask up the rest of it. Otherwise, just use tape. But uh, let's get to the booth. Okay, here we are in the booth. Again, new can, or essentially new can. I only used it for the inner fender wells so far. But again, this has been warmed up and shaken for several minutes, three to five minutes. All the parts are blown off. Do it the same as the first coat. It's just real light and then work our way up. Give that about three minutes and we'll be right back. Okay, three minutes are up. Get rid of another coat. Again, we're getting mostly coverage, but it's still pretty see-through. So I think we're going to go seven minutes, and then it'll be a final coat once we're done with that. All right, so here we are. Our seven minutes are up. Again, this is going to be the final coat. Since we started with a kind of a brown metallic, this gold isn't taking much to, to cover with. We're not covering a, a primer. So this should be our last coat. So we're going to slow it down. Bring up our gloss a little bit that way. Open this up. Did get a little heavy there in the middle. Try to fog out the, the metallics. We'll let that flash off, see how it looks, and if the metallics all look good, we'll call it a day. Okay guys, I gave it 20 minutes to make sure dry up, make sure we didn't get any weird metallic. Like I said, I got a little heavy. One of the easiest things to screw up is to get heavy, but I think we turned out alright. Metallics all look even, so we'll start unmasking it, and we'll take a look at it up on the bench. Okay, here we are up on the bench, got her unmasked. Like I said, we waited 20 minutes or so before we unmasked it. Maybe been 30 minutes now, now that we're up on the bench, but uh, can handle it no problem, no fingerprints, no smudges. Uh, let's try to, for some light handling, I would definitely wait, you know, maybe a couple hours before I did any kind of assembly handling. But I think light touching, you can definitely 
handle it and deal with it. So it makes lacquers really nice and useful, super quick drying. Again, if you want to put a clear coat on one, by all means do it. Just add it in as, as if it were another coat. That's the way I like to do it. I would have waited another maybe 10 minutes, thrown my clear coat on it, and called it a day. But I wanted this original 40s-ish feeling paint job, so I didn't go with a clear coat. And we'll just do a little hand polishing. Uh, if I get a chance to in this video... I will do some of that hand polishing to give you a, a look at what it looks like after a polish. But, uh, of course, just after I got it done unmasked, I went and dropped it and put a nice nick in the roof. So I need to sand that and get it resprayed here. If I can get that done in a timely fashion, I will definitely uh, try to show you guys, again, that hand polishing. But I think this tutorial was good enough to get you through your paint jobs. Again, number one. Uh, problem with painting is just too heavy or too quick in between coats. Lacquers, just take your time. They dry quick anyways. You know, give it 5-10 minutes. Light coats. And, uh, you know, we got a decent shine. It's ultra flat. No big orange peel. No dry sprays. Just a nice, consistent finish. And uh, if all the steps take your time, I think you can come up with the same kind of paint job yourself. And uh, with that... Thanks for watching. Okay, here we are the next day, Tuesday. We did get our little mishap sanded and repainted last night. So it's been, I don't know, 15, 16 hours. Now since we've got that repaired, we're looking pretty good. Now we'll do just a little bit of polishing on camera. Again, just grab your whatever your favorite polish is. I like the Wizards. I wouldn't use any kind of heavy cut on this because there's no clear coat. We will be taking some color with it when we do polish, so be aware of that. Don't get too wild, but uh, we're just going to do a little bit of polishing. can tell already we got a nice nice luster going on getting some good reflection getting a real nice shine nice slick surface I will do the the brown real quick and I'll call it a video Just a couple of minutes of polishing really bring that luster up. I think we're going to have a good looking car when we're done. 